Hi, this is Dr. Barry, and in this video we're going to talk about equipment breakdown insurance. This is from assignment 10 of the CPCU text. Let's start with an outline of what we're going to talk about today. First, equipment breakdown exposures, and those can be broken down into boilers and pressure vessels, electrical equipment, mechanical equipment, air conditioning and refrigeration equipment, and office equipment and systems. Then we'll talk about equipment breakdown insuring agreements, so we'll get into the policy. We'll start with definitions and the first three insuring agreements, and this will be an introduction. Insuring agreements for time element exposures, and then we'll look at a couple other insuring agreements. Then we'll talk about exclusions and coverage provisions. So let's start with equipment breakdown loss exposures pressure vessels, which are a significant type of exposure that's covered by equipment breakdown insurance. Pressure vessels can be either fired pressure vessels or unfired pressure vessels. Fired pressure vessels are a closed container that is heated by the direct fire of burning fuel and can withstand internal pressure. Boilers are the most common types of these. Many buildings are heated by boilers, so many businesses have this exposure. Boilers are a fired pressure vessel constructed of cast iron or steel in which water is heated to produce steam or hot water. It looks something like this. Common types of boiler breakdown are Explosion caused by excessive internal pressure of steam. Overheating, also known as dry firing, usually because of low water levels. Cracking of cast iron, for example, expansion stresses. Bulging, also known as bagging, for example, buildup of scale expansion stresses. Now for many of these things we're going to discuss in this video today, it might seem like you have to be an electrical engineer or at least somebody that's familiar with mechanical breakdown, but just having exposure to these types of losses and perils is extremely important in understanding how to insure them. Now let's look at unfired pressure vessels. An unfired pressure vessel is a closed vessel that can withstand internal pressure, but is not heated by the direct line of fuel. Perils of an unfired pressure vessel include explosion, bulging, cracking, and collapse. Now let's look at other equipment breakdown loss exposures. Electrical equipment, mechanical equipment, air conditioning and refrigeration equipment, and then office equipment and systems. Starting with electrical equipment. Common types of electrical equipment are power transformers, switchboards, distribution panels, circuit breakers, cables, motors, and generators. Types of losses are electrical shorting of wingdings, insulator connector or control failure, and bearing failure in rotating equipment. Common perils include supply line shortages, excessive moisture, and lubrication failure. As you consider all of these perils, Think about the fact that the initiating causes of many of these are often operator error, faulty maintenance, or faulty design and installation of the equipment. So they could be prevented by better training, regular maintenance, and inspections. Mechanical equipment is another exposure under equipment breakdown. Examples are compressors, pumps, blowers, fans, turbines, and gear sets. Examples of causes of loss are metal fatigue, weld failure, and mechanical stress. Air conditioning and refrigeration equipment, examples of components of this are motors, compressors, fans, switchboards, and coils, pipes, and vessels which as you can see, the diagram is an example of the inside of an air conditioning compressor. Causes of loss are control failure, vibration, improper control settings, and examples of loss are cracks or breaks in piping. Now let's talk about office equipment and systems. Traditionally, these were not covered by equipment breakdown insurance. 
With the widespread use of complicated office equipment, this category has been added. We just recently saw in our discussion of inland marine insurance that many times inland marine floaters can be purchased to cover EDP exposures, but some perils are not covered under the inland marine coverages. Examples of office equipment systems include computer systems, automated phone systems, and copiers. Examples of covered causes of loss are circuit board failures, distortion or breakage of parts, and insulator connector or control failure. Now I want you to watch this brief video from some insurance agents, the Tierney Agency. And the reason I like this video is because it illustrates something that's discussed in the assignment. Many businesses that you would think would not have an equipment breakdown exposure, and they don't think they have an equipment breakdown exposure, actually do. So I'd like you to go to the Prezi itself and watch this video either right now or after you've completed watching my video lecture. Now let's discuss equipment breakdown insurance. We'll start with an introduction and some definitions and then we'll get into the first three insuring agreements. But first, causes of loss related to equipment breakdown are often, as I previously mentioned, user operator error or faulty design or improper installation. That's why risk management efforts are extremely important, similar to crime exposures. Also note that equipment breakdown insurance used to be, and still sometimes is, referred to as boiler and machinery insurance. But because things like office equipment and systems were added, boiler and machinery insurance no longer encompassed all the types of exposures equipment breakdown insurance covered. A quick introduction to equipment breakdown insurance. We're going to talk about the policy definition of breakdown and I'll list the insuring agreements. This is from your textbook and also from the ISO policy. Breakdown means the following direct physical loss that causes damage to covered equipment and necessitates its repair or replacement. That includes Failure of pressure or vacuum equipment, mechanical failure including rupture or bursting caused by centrifugal force, or electrical failure including arcing. And then there are some things that it does not mean, such as malfunction, including but not limited to adjustment alignment, calibration, cleaning or modification, defects, erasures, errors, limitations or viruses in computer equipment, etc. Now let's look at the insuring agreements before I talk about them individually, specifically. Property damage, expediting expense, business income and extra expense or extra expense only, spoilage damage, utility interruption, newly acquired premises, ordinance or law coverage, errors and emissions, brands and labels, and contingent business income and extra expense or extra expense only. Check out the covered equipment on page 1014. Especially look at the first four, it doesn't include. So covered equipment means any equipment built to operate under internal pressure, electrical or mechanical equipment, communication equipment, and equipment in the first three paragraphs that is owned by a public or private entity used solely to supply utility services to your premises. It does not mean any media, part of a pressure or vacuum equipment, that is not under internal pressure of its contents or internal vacuum, insulating or refractory material, but not excluding the glass lining of covered equipment. Notice that definition because while everything below does not mean or include any, acts like an exclusion where it says, but not excluding the glass lining of any covered equipment, that is an exception to the exclusion and therefore is covered. Now let's talk about the first three insuring agreements. The definition of property covered is much broader than covered equipment. In other words, the covered equipment might have a loss, such as an explosion, but it isn't only the damage to the equipment that is covered. For example, a boiler explodes and damages the property around it. It includes any property the insured owns. 
So it covers damage to an insured's building, personal property, and customer's property in the care, custody, and control of the insured. This boiler explosion damaged the building and other property surrounding it. Next is the Expediting Expense Insuring Agreement. This covers expenses incurred to speed up the repair or replacement of covered property. Examples of this might include overtime wages and overnight shipping. It's not as broad as the extra expense coverage under business income insurance. It doesn't cover rent for a substitute facility, for example. Spoilage damage. This covers spoilage damage due to raw materials and finished products while in storage and finished products in the course of being manufactured. We talked about the problem of the 72 hour deductible or waiting period in business income coverage. This can be a good way for certain businesses to cover this exposure. A stipulation is that the spoilage must have resulted from the lack of or excess of power, light, heat, steam, or refrigeration and the insured must own or be legally liable for the property. Now let's look at time element coverages. Those are business income and extra expense or extra expense only, utility interruption, and contingent business income and extra expense. With the business income and extra expense or extra expense only, the insurer agrees to pay the insured's actual loss of business income during the period of restoration resulting from breakdown to covered equipment. Extra expense coverage applies to extra expenses the insured incurs to operate the business during the period of restoration, such as relocation, rent, etc. Most organizations need time element coverage in connection with equipment breakdown perils. Such time element losses are not covered under regular ISO business income and extra expense forms because the cause of loss is not covered. Utility interruption is another example of a time element coverage that would not be covered under a regular business income and extra expense form. This extends any business income, extra expense, or spoilage damage coverage to include loss resulting from breakdown of equipment owned or operated by a public utility. So if a utility company's transformer is destroyed, which shuts off all electrical power to the insured for several days, that utility interruption coverage will cover all the resulting loss of business income following the waiting period shown in the declarations. So this would include water, sewer, heating, gas, etc. Next is contingent business income and extra expense. This covers business income and extra expense from breakdown to covered equipment at a dependent property shown in the declarations such as, we talked about this before, with the business income and extra expense coverage, a leader location, a single buyer, or a single supplier. It must be not owned or operated by the insured. Now let's look at the other insuring agreements. Newly acquired premises extends the other coverages provided by the policy to apply at newly acquired premises for the number of days stated in the declarations. Ordinance or law coverage is similar to ordinance or law coverage under other commercial property agreements. For example, it would cover the cost of demolishing undamaged parts of a building or the increased cost of construction that are associated with an ordinance or law. Errors and emissions coverage is usually not included as part of the equipment breakdown form, but it's often requested by an insured and often added. It covers any error or unintentional emission in the description or location of an insured property that results in the failure of the policy to cover the loss. Also, an error to include any premises owned or occupied by the insured on the policy's inception date, and any error or intentional emission by the insured that results in the cancellation of the policy. So the errors and emissions coverage would actually cover the loss in lieu of the other policy insuring agreements. Brands and labels coverage is similar to the brands and labels endorsement for commercial property policies. The insurer pays reasonable cost to stamp merchandise with the word salvage on brands and labels that have been damaged so as not to injure the insurer's reputation. 
Next, the exclusions. The equipment breakdown coverage has exclusions similar to the commercial property policy, such as earth movement, nuclear hazard, etc. But other exclusions are fire or combustion that results in a breakdown, and water or other means of extinguishing fire, and breakdown caused by several other perils such as freezing caused by cold weather, windstorm or hail, and vandalism, and several other perils that are all usually covered by the CPP. And lastly, the coverage provisions. First, the limits of insurance. Generally, there is a limit per breakdown. So in other words, the limit applies for each incident of equipment breakdown. If there are subsequent incidents of equipment breakdown that are associated with the first equipment breakdown, the limit applies to all subsequent breakdowns. So for example, if the limit is $100,000 and the loss from the first breakdown was $90,000, you only have $10,000 left of coverage for any breakdown associated with that first breakdown. The limit for certain exposures is 25000 Those are spoilage from ammonia contamination and reduction in value of undamaged parts. When there is more than one location, the limit should be set at the maximum possible loss at any one location because there is virtually no chance of a catastrophic loss with this type of exposure. Remember, catastrophic losses result from things like windstorm and earthquake and flood, and this type of loss is more due to human error, faulty maintenance, and faulty equipment and installation. The equipment breakdown insurance does have deductibles. The insurer will not pay for loss that doesn't exceed the deductible. Time deductibles are used for time element coverages. Time deductibles may be expressed in hours or days. There may be a multiple of daily value deductible. For example, five. That number five would be stated in the declarations. The deductible is the amount of business income loss divided by days times five. So for example, if a business insured lost $45,000 in nine days, that means that they lost 45000 divided by 9 per day, or $5,000 per day. Therefore, 5000 times 5, which is the multiple of daily value deductible, equals a $25,000 deductible. And that concludes our discussion of equipment breakdown insurance.